Hi, I'm Ashley and welcome to my channel. So today is Monday, March 4th and we are going to be doing a cozy little reading vlog of this book, A Tempest of Tea. And this just came out last month in February and I am super excited to read it because it has tea, vampires, and heists. I have read from this Arthur before. I have read her book, We Hunt the Flame. And I still haven't read the second book, but I really enjoyed the first one. So I'm excited to read more from her. So I am going to go start reading this and I'll be back in a little bit with my first thoughts. So I am back with a reading update. I have made it to chapter 9, page 82, and so far I am really really enjoying this book. I am enjoying everything about it, like the plot, the characters, the world, everything is really really good so far. The book does have multiple perspectives, and the first character we are introduced to is 19 year old Arthi, and I love her character. She is really clever and smart and she went from being an orphan living on the streets to being an owner of a really popular establishment called Spindrift. And Spindrift is a tea house by day and a blood house for vampires by night. Because in this world there are also vampires and the book so far has started to establish its own vampire lore which I really like so far. Just like humans there are rich vampires and there are poor vampires and the rich vampires have an establishment in the city where they can go and safely drink human blood, but the poor vampires don't have that, and Spindrift gives them a place to safely indulge in human blood. And the vampire bloodhouse part of Spindrift is definitely on the illegal side of things, so Artie is always button heads with the government, and the government in this book is ruled by a monarch who wears a mask, and right now the one in power is the Ram. And it's made very clear that the government is very corrupt and has way too much power. And they're always trying to shut down the tea house and they're always having raids where they're trying to find evidence against the tea house. But so far all those raids have been foiled and they haven't been able to find anything. However, Arthi soon finds that she has to deal with a new problem. And that new problem is that she's going to be getting a new landowner. And her new landowner is none other than the Ram. And this is going to happen in two weeks, which means essentially her tea house is going to be shut down in two weeks and she is going to lose everything. However, she is soon presented with a possible way out of the situation and that is to go on a heist and retrieve these papers that she can use as leverage against the ram. And so now I'm at the part of the book where she is putting together her crew to do such things. And on a whole, I'm just really enjoying every aspect of this book so far. The world building, the characters, the plot, just everything has like grabbed my attention and pulled me in. And it's also just a lot of fun to read as well. One fun aspect of the world building is at the beginning it mentions how Arthi has this pistol that she pulled from stone and that there is lore surrounding the pistol that whoever pulls this pistol from stone is a savior and rightful ruler of the land and so immediately I was like wait is that like a nod to King Arthur because her name is Arthi and she's pulling a pistol from stone like the sword in the stone. And so I just thought that was a fun little tidbit. And also I just love the overall idea of the tea house, how it is a tea house by day and a blood house by night. And just reading that whole passage that describes how it turns from a tea house into a blood house was very fascinating and I thought really well done too, the way it was written. And one other thought I had while reading this book is that 
is really giving me Six of Crow vibes, not only because of the whole heist element, but also because Arthi, the main character, reminds me a lot of Kaz, and, and also just the overall world of A Tempest of Tea reminds me very much of the world in The Six of Crows where it is very dark and gritty. And also A Tempest of Tea gives us chapters from the perspectives of the people who are going on the heist just like Six of Crows does as well. So I have a feeling that people who liked Six of Crows will probably really like Tempest of Tea as well. And so far this book is already a four star read for me and I'm hoping that I will continue to enjoy it more and more and that it will possibly even be a five star. So it's now Wednesday, March 6th, and I am back with a reading update. So I am more than halfway through this book now, and I have just made it to Act 2, Past and Future. And so I'm on about page 200, and I am still very much enjoying this book. The parts I just read were Arthi and her crew getting ready for their heist, and it seems like Act 2 is going to be when they finally start the heist. The one thing I've really been loving in this book is the characters and the dialogue between the characters is just excellent. I love all the characters snark towards each other. There are just so many scenes that put a smile on my face and make me laugh because of their conversations with each other. An example of one of these interactions is on page 168. And so I'm just going to share that with you. This conversation that the characters are having doesn't have any spoilers in it. But one of our characters, Jin, really likes his pastries. So he has a tray of pastries and tea brought to the room where him and the rest of the members of the heist are. And he offers the pastries and tea to the other people who are in the room as well. None of the other characters refuses it, but just the way that they refuse it, they say, some of us like being nimble. And I just like love that snark and that like response because they just say, oh no thank you, they say that. And then the other character go, Jin, like gives it right back to that character and says, some of us are lucky enough to eat what we want and be nimble. And that's just one example of the dialogue between the characters that is just so well done in this book. And speaking of characters, one of the characters in this book has a little kitten that just follows him around and sometimes he puts it on his shoulder and I just think that is so cute and the most adorable thing ever. Also related to the characters, there has been some hints of romance. There is possibly two love interests for our main character, Arthi, though it looks like the book is leaning towards one over the other at the moment. And all the romance at the moment is just more on the side of romantic tension so, and angst, so it's a lot of fun to read about. And then the other romance has to do with Jin and another member of the crew. The other member of the crew has like one foot in Jin's world, but also one foot in the world of proper young ladies and gentlemen. So she is a little out of place in Jin and Arthi's worlds. So she can come across as really innocent and naive about some things. And so there is a scene where she ends up walking into something and not really knowing how to handle it because of her inexperience. And Jin ends up showing up and saving her and that it was just the most adorable scene. 
and that seed just made my heart so happy because it was so cute. So those are all my thoughts for now. I am going to continue reading and, and my next reading update will probably be when I finish this with my final thoughts. But right now I am going to take a break from reading be because I want to do a little arts and craft that is loosely related to this book. And that is I am going to make a bookmark that looks like a teacup. So I'm going to go do that next, and the next thing you'll see will be some b-roll of that. Hi, so I am back. Today is Thursday, March 14th, and I actually finished a Tempest of Tea almost a week ago last Friday, but I wanted to give myself time for my thoughts and feelings to settle, so now that time has passed, I'm ready to give my final thoughts on this book. So for my final thoughts and for my overall review, I'm actually going to use the Cobb Pile system, which is a rating system that was developed by another booktuber, Book Roast. And I will link her video about this rating system down below in the description if you want to check that out. But basically each of the letters in Cobb Pile stands for a certain aspect of the book. So C is characters, A is atmosphere, W is writing, P is plot, I is intrigue, L is logic, and G is enjoyment. So then each of these categories gets a rating from 1 to 10 and then at the end you add all the numbers from each category together and then you divide that number by seven and then that helps you get back to your five star rating system. So I wanted to try out this rating system because sometimes I feel like my thoughts and reviews are chaotic and all over the place just because I don't have a very good structure and I feel like this rating system will help me better structure my review. So for the first one, characters. I absolutely love the characters in this book. They easily get a 10. The characters were definitely one of my favorite parts of this book, hands down. All the characters in this book, both main and minor characters, were well-developed, complex, and layered. And just when you think you have something else figured out about the character, something new comes to light and makes you question, like, what you actually know about them. So there are five heist members, and we get the perspectives of three of them. So for those three characters, we rarely get to know them. But there are two other characters where we don't get their perspectives at all, so they remain more mysterious. And I think this worked really well for the book be because it added more tension and more mystery, and you're constantly trying to guess these characters' true intentions. And then the character relationships are just as complex as the characters themselves. For example, you have Jin and Arthi's very close-knit, non-blood brother-sister relationship, where they will lie down their lives for each other without a single thought, but also you come to learn that even though they care so deeply about each other and they do anything for each other, there are still secrets between them. Then also there are the romantic relationships in this book as well, which I mentioned a little bit earlier that there had been some sprinklings of romantic happenings. And in the second half of the story, we get more romantic developments. In the story, there are two primary romantic relationships that the story focuses on. And they are both very different from each other. And the first one is just the more innocent friends to lovers type that just makes you smile and giggle and gives you the warm fuzzies. And then the other one is more on the darker, angstier, tension-filled side. And that one also kind of has a little bit of a love triangle where I mentioned that earlier that it was kind of leaning to more towards one person than the other in that love triangle. But I kind of feel like 
by the end of this book that the second book could very possibly lean towards the other way but we shall see. I usually don't like love triangles but I feel like this book does it very well where I like both of these love interests so far and, and I want to know more about them. So now let's talk about the atmosphere. So I thought the atmosphere was very well done in this book. I gave it a 9. And the book takes place in an industrial like city called White Roaring and it is dark and it is gritty and I could picture myself in that city and I could picture it perfectly in my mind. It did remind me a lot of the world of Six of Crows so it's not like completely something new but, but also it has some elements that are unique to that world such as the tea house which I loved how the tea house was described and I could picture myself in that tea house and I would if I was a part of that world I would love to visit the tea house. And another part of the book that I think made the world building unique was establishes its own vampire lore tailing the vampires to fit this story. So writing, I thought the writing in this book was phenomenal. I give it a 10. I know I talked a little bit earlier about how I loved the dialogue in this book. I thought the dialogue was excellent. I loved how the characters all played off of each other and every line that came out of their mouth I was either laughing or smiling to myself because their dialogue was just so entertaining. And also the descriptions of everything, especially the tea house, were also really well done. Then plot, plot, I am giving a 9 because I thought the plot was very solid. It was a very simple plot, like they're going on a heist. That's the plot to save the tea house. However, while there is that overarching plot, there's also like subplots as well. For example, there's a subplot of how vampires have just mysteriously been going missing and no one knows what's happening to them and that ends up tying back into the main plot after so I really liked how that was tied in. And also the characters and their motivations and just who they are as individuals also really affects the plot as well and keeps things interesting. And then the way this book ends the last chapter, chapter 60, oh my gosh, chapter 60. I read chapter 60 and I was like, I need more, I need the next book. And chapter 60 is from a completely different POV and it's this character that has been alluded to before in the books but their identity is unknown and now after chapter 60 I, ha I have some theories about who they might be but that won't be confirmed until the second book comes out so I have to wait. And now that thought kind of goes into the next thing which is intrigue and intrigue. I'm giving this book a 10 because I was never bored during this book at all. It kept my attention, I kept flipping the pages, and even at the end I'm still intrigued and I need the second book right now. So then logic is the next category. That I am also giving a 10 because I feel like none of the characters did anything out of character and nothing weird or convenient happens with the plot. It all flowed really well and organically. And then enjoyments, we already know, that's getting a 10. I enjoyed this entire book from start to end. I love the characters, I love the world, and the plot kept my interest all the way through. And overall, I think this book really balances all its parts very well. Nothing overshadows the other. The characters, the plot, the romance, vampire elements, and even the little vampire mystery going on all, all come together to create a really compelling and riveting story that just kept me flipping the pages and wanting more. So overall, I love this book, even though at the end it did break my heart a little bit because there was something that happened to a certain character and I was just like, no. And especially like after that thing happening, thinking about all the repercussions that are gonna come from that thing happening and my heart was just like breaking for them. But anyways, moving on. I love this book, five stars, definitely. If you love YA fantasy, you need to read this. If you love Six of Crows, you need to read this. If you love books with heists and adventure and awesome characters, you need to read this. If you have read this, let me know down below what you thought of it. Let me know your favorite character. My favorite character is Jin, but I also love the little kitten as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye!